Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Good evening. Bob Ryder here with Professional Photographers of Idaho with my buddy. Larry Fry. Larry Fry. Yeah. With Larry Fry Photography. Yes, sir. Also with Professional Photographers of Idaho. Also with that. You've had a very interesting morning. I have had it. And was it yesterday? Yesterday. Tell yeah, me about? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear a lot about that, but I want you to tease ah. next week's episode okay. with that. So uh, I just got, well, not done yet. I still have a, a session on Sunday, but uh, I just was part of a two point a, a two plus million dollar donation to charities in the valley. That's astounding. So, yeah, it was awesome, uh, and I, I won't say too much more than that except for the fact that, um, you know, sometimes you gotta rub el elbows with some people that you don't know to uh, to get to be where you want to be, so so to speak. And so. and to maybe capitalize on that statement a little bit, sometimes you need to rub elbows with the people that you want to serve. Correct. Yeah. Well, not sometimes. All the time. The whole yeah. premise of next week's episode is you have to be where your potential client is, is. Yep. to connect with those clients. Yeah. And uh, so my first and, car, and, and some can of I go back to this? Yeah, go, uh, let me, one point, go. then you go. So, go ahead. So the, the premise of that thing is, is that I, 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 I was looking at this opportunity and I probably, if I was just looking at it as, as a, oh, I need, I need to go do this, I probably wouldn't have done it. Because uh, it's, you know. How, how did you wind up serving in this? So you were a marshal for? A golf, uh, a, golf, a golf tournament. Yeah. What happens to be the, the uh, Albertsons Boise Open. And I'm a 10th hole That's marshal. Awesome. And uh, I actually, uh, I think I told everybody I'm kind of a rock and roll baby. So Sammy Hagar is playing tomorrow night, right? So that's what I went out there to do was get tickets to Sammy Hagar. <laughs> and then, and then the, on the website, it said be a volunteer. And I'm like, well, What's that all about? So, What's that about? Uh, boom. But <laughs> yesterday I got to rub out, you know, my, my, we have a, there, there's a little team. Uh, uh, th this is the scope of this thing. Just think of this. So there are 10 marshals at least per hole. So that's 180 marshals over four days. That's 100. Just, just the volunteers. Just, this isn't well, the that, players. That's just the marshals. That's not everybody. Okay. There's, there's almost 700 volunteers at this thing. Wow. Yeah. So um, spread over a lot of acres of land because it's and, a golf course and four days. So okay, that makes yeah, great yeah. sense. So that makes great it's, sense. It's a big deal, and uh, to be part of donating that much money back to the community is awesome. And uh, you know, thanks to Albertsons and Chevron for doing that, and I don't get paid by them. Uh, yeah, that, so so the job that I just finished that composite that we've been talking about for a couple of weeks now, right. I finally got a finish on that. Um, that is driven by the Albertsons Foundation. They yeah. are a funder for this nonprofit that yeah. I just finished yeah. photographing. So, and if you hadn't seen that composite, by the way, it's awesome. But um, it is pretty cool. Long story short, <laughs> I, I, uh, I volunteered, and now uh, the the ten, the ten people that were with me all know you know who I am and what I do. Yeah. Uh, and in addition to that, during because you spent time with them. Yeah. And in addition to that, during the breaks and whatnot, and get you know rides and whatever, you get to chat with people and it, you know it's a big place so you're going from one end to the other you got two or three minutes on your golf cart to chat with yeah. them what do you do I'm so and so whatever you know I did my inbox blow up this morning no but it's all about the feed and it's not about the you know everybody talks about a drip system this is a this is a this, personalized oh my drip gosh system, so if yeah. you were to take that concept of drip marketing and apply it to now that is right the essence of business networking right. it is right. just being present. We've talked about this being present thing, right? But we're going to we're going to do more of this. Oh yeah, next yeah, week. So, so next week. Yeah. <laughs> so no, go back to your your story. Oh, I was just kidding. you know what? I maybe I'll save it for next week okay. and stay on topic here. Okay. Just okay. remind me about my first car as we're having the conversation okay. next okay. week cuz it it would well apply to this situation cuz it was a piece of car. A piece and of <laughs> I, I've had those. <laughs> it was my first car. Yeah. Had my buddy's handprints. Anyway, yeah. um, paint on the trunk because because yeah. we because that's where he was most of the time. Push starting it right. <laughs> oh no, I thought and maybe we, up against the trunk. No, no, no. <laughs> you're on the outside. Not the inside, that's what made right? you a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, anyway, this is anyway uh, yeah. crazy stuff. But um, but that first car experience would be a great illustration of what it looks like to try and get in with a certain crowd. Yeah. I'm going to just make sure that this, uh, there, that's good. Okay. So I want to come back to our topic today. And actually we do have an announcement to make, but we're yeah. going to just prime this one more time. Our topic today is outsourced. And as usual, many of these conversations that we have come from our real life experiences. Yeah. Like what am I experiencing right now? 
and, um, and and we hit we hit on this topic last week. Yeah, we, but, we kind of but mentioned this it. is kind of going into the outsourcing. Yeah, we're going to talk about yeah. um, the barriers to outsourcing. Um, maybe some of the things, the feelings that people have about outsourcing. We're going to talk a little bit about that, and then we're going to talk about the benefits to outsourcing. And um, I'm just going to say right before we go to our announcement here, which I'm going to click on. Right, um, this is one of those. Can you afford to do it? Can you afford not to do exactly. it? Kind of scenarios. Yep. So let's cover our announcement. We just have one. Yep. We're going to fly through it this week. Yep. We're not going to spend five minutes with it. No. That's why we've got a simple slide for yep. it. And um, and then we're going to roll into our topic and maybe finish a little early today because I've got a I've got a back to back session. Sounds here good. Today. Sounds All good. All right. So let's roll into our uh, just a primer for fall retreat. Fall retreat. Got everything on the website. Uh, if you guys don't know about it yet, it's our. 2021 Fall Retreat in, at uh, Teton Peaks Resort in Titonia. You can look that up. That's uh, a little, I am a little so, north of uh, Driggs. I'm so excited to have an opportunity um, to get over to that part of the state mm -hmm. because I and, haven't yet. And, and what a what a prime time, September 24th to 26th. Now, we might be just a little past the actual prime for leaves and whatnot, uh, but then again, we might not, we might not either. So who knows with the weather, right? Nature. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> nature, right? Because so, nature. Uh, if you haven't been out the website yet, and if you haven't secured your lodging, I would suggest that you do that. Did this, you get an RV spot? I did. This is a little... What side are you? Uh, I don't remember. I'm in 21. Yeah, I think you told me that. They're so close together. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, this isn't like a closed thing, like you have to be have a room by X date. But That's because they the, didn't block rooms. They didn't for us, block but, rooms. But, but they, the longer you wait, the chances are good that there's gonna be other people there. Yeah, because we're not taking room. We're kind of taking over the resort, but they're not holding it for right. us. So there there are motels and stuff in Driggs and I think there's one or two in two. Well and they they offer dry camping there too. So you, right. there are oh, yeah. there are lodge accommodations, there are tiny resorts, is that what they call them? It's yeah, yeah, there. tiny houses. Tiny retreats is what yeah, they call yep. them. Um, they've got RV sites and um, full hookups and not full hookups. Yeah, and they got tent sites. They have. This is going to be kind of. It's going to be fun. It, it's kind of like a uh, professional camping trip. Let's just put yeah, it that way. It, yeah. Well, or you know, go take one of their tiny resort. You know, or yeah, take yeah. one of their uh, yeah. lodging accommodations. I guess what it is is there's a little bit of something for everyone. Yep. Um, we have done Thanksgiving camping in the Redwoods for our whole family uh, years ago, and um, we've got people that are like, well, we don't camp. We're more like Camp Hilton kind of people. If that's you, there's a place for you there. Right. If you're, yeah, you could you can get a cabin there if you yeah. want. That's full blown like cabin. I we, mean, we did it again. We're we still talking high, about. It. I know, I know. You know why? Because I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. We. Uh, so many of us in our professional circle right now, our friends network, we are all working really hard right now. And I am so looking forward to janking the plug out of the wall. A couple of days off. And leaving. We're going to go down Thursday. I think mm -hmm. we are. Yep. You are too. Yep. We're going to go down Thursday. I'm going to wake up Friday morning and stretch and look at the mountains. And, probably will and let you do that. I would probably get going to head over to uh, Jackson. So yeah. you better... Uh, we'll early. see. Yeah. Anyway, I'm looking forward to the time. It's going to be great. I'm going to yep. pop that up there one more time. This is our 2021 fall retreat at the Teton Peaks Resort in Tetonia, Idaho. PPofIdaho.com. Go to the events. Uh, click on that registration page. you got to register for it, of course. Yep. Uh, and it's a hosted event. And Yes. And then the contact information for the Teton Peaks Resort is on there. You give them a call. Probably will go to voicemail. I'm just going to prep you on this. They probably go to voicemail, but they call you back like... They, they answered yeah. my phone and they gave me a nice discount. Yeah, so don't uh, really don't don't wait is all we're saying. If yep. you wait till uh, September twentieth, you're going to be probably too late. Okay. So yeah, let's jump into our topic. I'm going to throw that slide back up here one more time, and uh, we're going to talk about outsourced today. And I'm just going to be frank. This comes from me. I've been working out of the area on non photography related business. I kind of have a side hustle. Um, so I was up in McCall, which was, I mean, if you've got to go work somewhere, work in McCall, right? <laughs> I took my bike, I rode around the lake, I had a great time, but I worked like 15, 16 hour days. We, we were up early and went to bed late. Um, and I took work with me. I had just finished up, well, I was halfway through photographing 100 plus people uh, for one of my clients. So I took all of those headshots with me. I basically brought them into Lightroom, toned them up, got all that going the way I wanted, cropped them, and shot them off to an editor. 
And by the time I got back, all that work is done and it's delivered to my client and then I'm ready for round two with these folks when I get back. I So I have this thing, I don't like to go into work with a lot of work mm -hmm. piled up behind because the backlog stresses me out. I wanna serve my client. I, I was at a networking event last night and, and one of the one of the groups that were at this networking event were like, oh man, I wish we'd have met you a month ago. We just had our headshots done for the whole practice. I'm like, great, did you find, well, we found a guy and it was a little weird and we, we, we still haven't seen them yet. We, we and that was a, a month ago. Yeah. I'm like, I can't make my clients wait a month. This is business, man. There's yeah. a hustle they've got. They're on point. Anyway, I hate carrying work to work to work. I want to get it finished and delivered. So, so. the procrastination part of it for me, mm. when I find out in the in the wedding business is the farther behind I got, you get like embarrassed. Like and you and then, and then it, you don't want to talk well, to them. And like, then and then you get another one and it stacks up and then pretty soon you're so far behind you don't know what you're doing or who you're doing it with. So outsourcing uh, you know 300 images to me is a lifesaver. I just, I, just, I just shoot them out and say, do you think? And we talked about this last week a little bit. Did they come back perfect the way I would have done it? Oh, yeah. Probably so this, not. Probably not. This but, is one of our barriers. I'm, I yeah. probably should put it on there. But it, they're done. And, 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 and you know what? So I use my wife as a kind of a reference. Sounding board. Yeah. And she... Like, as do I. She's like, if I, if I retouch an image and I give her the I, side by side, here's the image I did, here's the image they did. She, meh. Yeah. They <laughs> so look the same I, to me. So yeah. I literally did the same thing. We got, we just got like another 60 plus images back uh, from the editor yesterday. And um, I had issue with several of them. I'm like, go look at them. Tell me what. She found issue with probably six of them that had just been over processed. Mm -hmm. um, because we, with business headshots, we're really not leaning towards the glamour look. And they had done skin softening like a lot on all of the women that we photographed. Not the men. The men were fine. Um, it was the women. So I just hit redo mm -hmm. and tell them. Take it off. Tone it down. <laughs> back so off on the skin softening. Yeah. And they, they were back within a few hours. You should have said fine. Tone, tone it down. That's a good pun. Tone it down. So yeah. anyway, I, I wanted to make sure I was communicating clearly because yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to have to manage it a lot. And, and you're different than uh, you're different than certainly a, a group photographer, although not that much on group photography. You can get uh, too much, but like on a like on a, on a huge crew or a huge wedding, uh, you know, where you got all the bridesmaids and all the groomsmen and, and mom and dad and everything else in there. You're t you're looking at twenty, sometimes 25, 30 people. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little different story than when you're doing a headshot, right? You know, and you're, you're, you and you are you're, up close. You can yeah. see pores. Right. I mean, forty five megapixel camera. Yeah. You are right. seeing the blackheads and the pores and right. like so. Anyway, I let's let's talk about the barriers here, and um, I'm I'm getting tapped and buzzed and I just need to take my watch off again like there I did last go. week and then I left it out here all day and didn't get my step. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, <laughs> um, so let's talk about barriers for just a minute. Um, there are barriers to outsourcing, and I, I I'm going to come back. We'll come back to barriers for just a second. Outsourcing isn't just editing. Correct. So, um, CPA or bookkeeper, payroll. Um, tell me about the payroll and workers' compensation regulations for Idaho. Yeah, no. No, yeah. I'm gonna hire somebody who does that right. so I don't get in hot water. How, how many of you guys have your taxes done? A lot of you, I mean, I do, because yeah. yeah. I don't want to deal with it. And, and get this, if the IRS ever comes knocking on my door, uh, Go see, go see, uh, go see Bill, a Ace uh, CPA over here. Yep. Because yep. now, I'm going to predicate that a little bit. You have to turn in correct. It's kind of like, predicate it. Yeah, that's it's, awesome. I know. Thanks. He's predicating. It's it's kind of like <laughs> uh, early. Well, any computer, you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? That so if, like if that. you don't, if you don't give your accountant or your CPA or whoever it is that's doing your taxes the right information, they're going to prepare it on what you give them. And that's a barrier. That's a barrier. That's a barrier. And it's a communication issue. Right. Right. And so when it comes back, and now the IRS is knocking on your door, it's up to you to yeah. prove that you really did drive to Hawaii <laughs> <laughs> with your submersible car. That was very good. That was very yeah. salient. Um, 
So Ooh, let's salient. come right. It's predicating are, and are, salient. And we are yes. on our old. Um, so listen, barriers to outsourcing. And I've literally just experienced this in the last two to three weeks of, all right, I need to bring outsourcing into mm. my workflow, into my process, because I'm doing tons of volume right now. So one of those barriers is just what you described. You have to explain your needs clearly. Or if we were to rephrase it, you have to provide all the information they need to do the work. And that can be a barrier if you're not right. a good communicator. And then the other thing is, is maybe you're using words like predicating or salient, yeah. yep. and the person doing the editing is like, dude, I'm an artist. I don't even know what that means, <laughs> right? Yep. Um, not that, uh, geez, it's okay. Uh, you know what I'm saying there, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe, maybe linguistics, maybe the, you know, vocabulary issue. So uh, when I was a cop, I'm gonna come back here. When I was a cop, we have to write reports not using cop lingo, right? Okay, but using something that could be read in court and understood by a jury of twelve people and understood widely. So um, same thing applies here. You have to be able to communicate and, clearly. And your and your twelve people are not sometimes as educated like you were saying. I mean, you right. have to realize that not all people know what prejudice means or predicate or. Any of those what, things, yeah, right? Yeah. So another thing that I discovered this uh, last couple of weeks <clears throat> is um, is the time that it took to think through and develop a workflow that made sense. And I'm still struggling with this. I've done it, but I have a workflow that I'm very fond of. So, and now I'm introducing a, two whole new sets of files. So that so let's go back to that what you just said. You have a workflow you're very fond of. So you did it for years and years and years. You you yeah. went ahead and you you have fine tuned that over the years to the point where it's working for you. It really does. And it's safe. It I have safe. backups and the whole process. And is now it's not. Now it now so this goes. You know, you guys are all gonna. This is changing the paradigm. Basically, you're going to have that's to. That's what it is. You're going to have to. And, and oh, part of this time, part of this develop a work so. Uh, a work process and a workflow all goes into your communication. So what we're really talking about here is basically the pre uh, barrier that's huge is that I need this done in such a manner and I need it done this way in this amount of time. And most of the time, the, this amount of time is not a big deal. Yep. It's the first two that which we've just talked about that are a big deal. So yeah. you got to, you have to do that. And then, and then <laughs> just like you have developed yours over years and years and years, it's going to come back. And you were just telling me about some headshots that came back all plasticky. Um, it's going to come back and you're going to have to say, okay, hold on. The, yeah, the, you, did the, you did the males perfect. You the, the females, we need to tone it down a little bit. And well, and then you got to refine that some more because they're going to come back and you're going, well, okay, not quite right. So my, my first response was these idiots. Yeah. And then I thought, I'm the idiot. Yeah. If they did it that way, I didn't explain myself clearly. Right. So one of the things, I'm using retouchup.com and there's a lot of great editors out there. I know uh, Evolve is a good one, right? Right. Um, there's, there's some there's other a ones lot out of them, there, yeah. yeah. Um, Without having to go overseas. They spend a lot of time communicating to me through email and telephone Let's build a set of instructions. Yeah. That that may, that ensures your work is done the way you need it to. And I'm like, yes. Guess what? That takes time. Dang it! Right. Yeah. They came. I I I marked the ones I needed redone, and I I made a very clear couple of notes on them. Um, and they came back fine. They yeah. came back perfect. So let's go back just a little bit. Like so, I, I let my wife look through all of these and. Um, so we're back to the image editing part of this, but just know this could be outsourcing uh, your bookkeeping. This could be outsourcing, um, uh, you know. Time management. So l let's say you have a, a beautiful brick and mortar studio like Sam does, mm -hmm. okay? Do you have somebody monitoring surveillance? I'm not gonna monitor surveillance in my own place. Right. You might pay for an alarm company to do that or to monitor the alarm and call yeah. the cops if there's a problem. Yeah. Um, I did when I, dude, I had a gun shop, right? I'm not staying up 24 hours a day right. monitoring the cameras, monitoring my alarm. I outsource that stuff, right? Okay. Some things are stupid obvious, like I need an alarm company. Right. But the other side of that is I need an editor. And now that I've got this editor, it allowed me <laughs> this week, like this is so tangible for me. <laughs> Sending the files to the editor meant that I could leave the computer and go do what I do really well 
which is talking to people and making business. So the next point to, uh, to, to the barriers is cost. It'll cost you money to hire someone. It'll cost you money to outsource. What does that look like? Besides the fact that a lot of it's a write-off, right? These are expenses of doing exactly. business, right? But, but that first point of, well, why would I pay a couple hundred bucks? You know, that's my money. Why would I pay a couple of hundred bucks when I can do this job? Like I can do my own editing. I've done it for years and years. I, look, at, I can do my own mechanicing too. <laughs> I don't do it. Cause I, I, you did your own spray and bed liner. Well, that I did turned that. out great. I did, but you're doing mine too. I'm talking. Okay, I didn't tell you that. But talking, I, I could, if I had to, I could literally take a transmission out and take it down to the transmission shop. Yeah, I don't I'm know the not inside. Doing that. But how many hours are you going to do that? And, and you got to look at this exactly the same way. Well, and what's, so, what's your time worth? What's, what's your time worth? If, if you're, well, first of all, if you're charging fifty bucks an hour, you're probably too light but let's just say you are uh and it takes you three hours to uh, to edit it takes me a lot longer we run that. on a 200 hundred dollar an hour basis okay so if it that's takes our you, basis so if it takes you three hours you that's just spent six hundred dollars and and t ask me answer me this uh, you don't have to put no, I'll tell you. <laughs> i know that's what i'm asking <laughs> did your uh retoucher cost you that much 250 some there bucks. you go so he just made 300 might have been 273 all right he just made 200 and $27. And while they were doing that, I was off making a connection with another office with 30 people. Yeah. So you know what that represents to me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Three, three grand. Uh, so more than that. <laughs> yeah. So does it, does it really cost you? And we just hit on a thing. It's also a tax right off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Little, not all of it, but all right. Your, your, your guys will get that. So let's, let's jump over and talk benefits. Yeah, okay, well, so we, we talked, already have, but let's well, do it. And let's, we've been kind of blending them, but yeah. I've got some points here yeah. that I want to cover. And then we've got a testimonial or two, Yeah. because I posted this, uh, I posted that, that we were going to have this conversation on, on Facebook, and it lit up. Dude, I didn't even read it that. It was I'm so sorry. good. I, I, um, I blew it. On which home. is so encouraging when, when people are like resonating with the topic yeah. that we choose. Why aren't so, they here today? Well, yeah, there's some people here, but not yeah. all at once. Yeah. I need somebody to give us a shout out over here on the, on the yeah. chat. Just, we're, we're looking at a blank screen. You're looking at a blank chat, and that's frustrating because I love mm -hmm. to hear from you folks. You know, um, we've got uh, we've got probably more than one, but I know for sure because I've been having a conversation with Sherry Barron. Excuse me, Sherry Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> they even spell it differently. They, they don't, do anyway. That's correct. Sherry Hammond has been an outsourced retoucher for years. Yeah, you know, I didn't realize she did like retouching. Like, uh, I thought she was just a painter. Uh, the the uh, Art painting. Uh, that's all I thought Digital she did. Paint. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I don't. I haven't known Sherry for a long time. Yeah. I, remember, I, I just. I shouldn't say that. I just met Sherry a couple of years ago, and I don't really know that much about her or where she came from. I did not know that she retouched. So that's amazing. And, and I. So really, just learning that this week, uh, we were having a little conversation about that. Um, so let's talk benefits here for a minute. And one of the key things that I've hit on is freedom. Outsourcing gives you time for the things that you enjoy or are good at. I need time. So here's a classic conundrum. Here's a classic. <laughs> conundrum. <laughs> here's the classic problem. You're a solopreneur, right? Yeah. You're either working. Yep. Or you're not. Or making work. Correct. Or you, or you should be. Because if you're not making work, you're not going to be working. Well, so that's my point. If yeah. I'm working, yeah. if I'm spending three days at, at one of my clients practices, it's yeah. three days that I'm not building the next job in for next week, next month, next year. Right. Right. So that's a problem. And that is a classic problem of the solopreneur. So the, the, the benefit to the retouching, the benefit to outsourcing that retouching is it gave me the time to go make more work. Great stuff. Great and so, stuff. And so, and that rolls right into your next point of less stress. Because guess what? If you can go out there and make more work, there's less stress for everything. Not only less stress for retouching the stuff that you've just done and is stacking up, but less stress for next month, next year, that you have those clients coming in and or around anyway, so you know what's going on. So less stress all the way around. I just got a sneak hug from I my saw, kid. He's, he's so, That's awesome. He's so sneaky. Yeah, Comes sneak hug. Your Came dog's up. not so much sneaky. <laughs> Dogs, well, I can't see what the dog is. Um, I, the stress thing, uh, I can't even begin to tell you. Yeah. Well, and, I, I mentioned it. I don't want to go into work with a backlog of work. And, exactly. And what led me to this point where I was retouching or outsourcing, 
Shout, Michael says, and Dennis Hammond. He says, here on Dennis' computer. I think oh, it might that's be probably Sherry, Sherry yeah. on Dennis' computer. Yeah, yeah. Glad to have you here. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you're in the comments, right? This is Sherry, if you have questions for me. Sherry, I'm going to have a question for you here in just a minute because we're going about to, to pop it on here. We'll jump into the testimonials, and when we do, I want to bring you in. I do have a question for you. Actually, I'll lay the question out right now. So she can so that she can answer consider it and get it into the chat because there's a little bit of a delay. Good idea. Um, so Sherry, tell us a little bit, and, and I know you probably have long-standing relationships with the people that you're retouching for, but if I were today to onboard a new photographer, you were to onboard a new photographer, how what does your process look like? What do you need to hear from them to do the work? So. Chew on that for a little bit and, and pop an answer back into the chat. That would be here's excellent. A, here's, uh, uh, just to expand on that, do you, you, do you have a checklist to send to them, much like we would have a checklist to send to a potential client about what to I wear? I suspect she's much more conversational than that. Probably. But that's a I, great yeah, well, question. Yeah, that's yeah. a great question. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump back to um, our benefits slide because the, the bottom line here for me... Bottom line, bottom line. ...is I can make more money by outsourcing the things that bog me down. I get mired in my editing. I enjoy editing. Yeah. Um, listen, no, I enjoy editing a single person through a job. I don't enjoy editing 100 people. It's tedium to me. So, um, so I outsource the thing so that sits on my shoulders, and, and the net effect of that is that I make more money because I, because I made more work in that process. I found more work. I booked more work. I talked to more people. So, as you know, I've been working on composites. Yeah. And the more that I, I find it, uh, I can get lost in a composite. <laughs> Not lost as in I don't know what to do, but lost into like I'll sit down and two hours later I look up and go. Whoa, where'd the sun go, right? Yeah. So lost. And I, I enjoy it because I'm creating something else out of several other things. I really right? enjoy that process too. If I had 300 of those to do, I might not be as... That's got to go to the editor. Yeah, it's got to go yep. somewhere. Yep. I would say because the composites that I do for my clients take a, a, a lot of time in the chair. They yep. really take a lot of time. And then this last client, we did... Our final version was four revisions and a reshoot. Yeah. Okay. Well, the reshoot had to happen. I, I think it had to happen, yeah. and it was fabulous. Oh, it turned out. Fabulous. Yeah, next. And the client was, and they're like, bill us. And I'm like, no way, man. I guarantee my work, and we didn't love it. You didn't love it, and I didn't love it. Let's reshoot just this one person did in you, the group. Did you show them the hand thing, the picture? Huh? Did you should show her that hand picture? Yeah, I delivered a series of them. There was a, a process of generation anyway. Yeah. Um, cool. But if I had two or three or four clients all wanting that same service at the same time, dude, that's going to an editor. Yeah. Because I, I can't continue my business while sitting at the chair right. doing that. And then on top of that, you know, I, I think this is our busiest time we've seen in ever. my business, yeah. ever. No, and I don't mean that facetiously. No. This is the busiest we've ever been. The communications are frequent. By the way, if you guys aren't set to come into 22, the fall of 21 and into 22, you need to be because it's busting loose right now and yeah. you need to be ready. Just, I'm just, I feel like a, I feel like a dad. I don't want to be a dad here, but, you, you, just a warning that you, you real estate photographers know. You've already been there, right? <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about that here in a minute, yeah, too. But, but the rest of you, if you're not ready to jump on, and uh, I think Sam Marvin would even say he's had the best year I think he's had for a long, long time. It's And there's going to be more. So There is going to be more. I, you know, the, I, I think we have a little bit of trepidation right now about the, the Delta variant and the COVID breakouts right, and the new right, mask requirements. Right. But... There's a huge reluctance to shut things back down. Oh, that won't happen. Well, yeah. so we're hedging against that. Right. In some ways, we're being cautious with our spending going into the fall, into the winter. I have work booked into next year, which is so good. Yeah. Um, Me too. But 
that could change. It yeah. changed on me last year. Right. Right. I had book. I it, worked booked, and then it changed. So we're it, just it guarding could, against that. It could, but the trend, the business trend, and I do a lot of reading on the business trend, is, yeah. is that it won't completely shut down, but we'll, we'll, that's neither here nor there. We're, let's right. get back to our time. All right, so coming right back to this, um, I, I, I primed this uh, this live episode um, yesterday on social media, and it popped up with some great conversation. Um, one of my peers, Sky Facet, I don't know where you are today, you're probably out working, turning and burning, because that's what you do. Right. Um, she's a, a, a real estate photographer, I'm gonna say. In Twin Falls area. In the, yeah, well, in, in, in that whole neck of the woods, because she's got a huge portfolio. Yep. Um, incredibly talented woman. So Sky, and, if you're listening to this, do you go up to Jerome and like that, or yeah, she's, uh, Wendell, or Burley, or I have, or, I have, I have uh, led her to, I have forwarded clients to her, um, I've got a buddy here in commercial real estate, and um, his mom's also in real estate, but on the on the, the housing side. And he's like, I I I need a photographer out in. And um, guess who so I met? I, I, guess who I met in the uh, charity work? I did who'd you meet? A couple of realtors. Did that happens, right? <laughs> so like, and they're like, really? You do real estate? I don't know, not really, but I know somebody who does. Yeah. So yeah. So anyway, uh, Sky has, and I've known this for a long time. Sky. Um, outsources her editing. I think her guy's name is Kevin. Okay. Um, but I don't know that for sure. It's just what it. I think. You can call him John if you We're want gonna, to. No, I think it's Kevin. Okay. Um, but Sky said on social media, on Facebook, she says, I could not do my job without outsourcing. My editor is outsourced and I look at him as part of my team. That's so strong, mm -hmm. right there. So I asked her, I'm like, can you tell me more? Can you expand on how that affects you? day in and day out. And her response was, I can shoot all day. And my editor is proficient at editing and having those images returned the next morning. She says, real estate's a very fast moving business, so having a great editor makes a huge difference. Um, she gets to sleep and spend time with her family. So listen, I, I, before I came here to Idaho, I was in that western state that we don't talk about too much. Correct. Starts the one that's C. on fire. Yeah. Um, Into the name. I, I was doing about 150 homes a year out there. I had a great client who just kept me working all the... It was great. Um, but if I could do two jobs a day because I had to shoot and edit and shoot and edit. Okay? But that could be four or five homes a day in this market where you literally just send the files to the editor and by the time you get home at night, you're like, whew, time for dinner and time for family and time, I like to read. I, I, I end my night in a novel and I, I love it. But if you're stressed about work or you're the person who's editing until two or three or four in the morning because you're so busy, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I totally get what Sky is saying and then yeah. Jason, uh, McAdam, who also does real estate photography uh, up here in the Treasure Valley, he said to Sky, I couldn't imagine editing real estate images. Laugh out loud, shoot me now. Yeah. And if I were to go back to doing real estate photography, and I do, I've got a couple of realtors that use me as problem solver. Okay, I don't want to, I don't want all the hustle of the houses anymore, um, but I've got a couple of folks that use me as a problem solver. Um, I'm not going to edit that stuff because because yeah. I'm going to send it to somebody who does real estate edit. So here's the other part of this, right? Um, I want to hire an expert. Yeah. Right. So yes, I have this skill set. And I and I, I do too, but I I'll never edit another wedding ever again. <laughs> Seriously, Duh. I just don't, hit I the just, send key. Exactly. I I put my 300 images or whatever it is into a folder. I tag the one or two that I want to have something special done to, and I. Boom, they're gone. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up another topic. I didn't make a slide for this. What the heck? Um, because I it's not really I don't want to like put it on the screen for people like that's a dumb word. Um, but I'm I call it insourcing. Mm -hmm. Insourcing uh, to me to our business is I've got a couple of people that do something very specific very well, and they bring them with me to jobs, and they do their thing very well. I pay them as contract mm -hmm. contractors because they're not employees of mine. Second shooter. Um, they come do, I, my one gal Rochelle, she comes um, and she just prints people. We, I've talked a lot about it because it's been so profound to me. 
So we show up at the job site, there's four or five of us, and it's just, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Right, right. That person gets in front of my camera, I know they're ready. I might go up and arrange the shirt and, Dude, but, yeah. but when, they're ready. When you're shooting a, a wedding, like I do, I just, my second shooter does what I know, and I don't even worry about, and it's a she as a, as a general rule, rule it's a she. Because uh, she can go places you can't. Exactly. Or that you don't feel comfortable. You want to go to this? Yeah, let's go back uh, to that. Sherry says, I don't really do a lot of retouching for photographers. I have one studio, they do all theirs, and just a little for others. Professional photographers commission me to do their paintings. Okay, that makes good sense. Back to what you were saying about her painting. Um, sorry that I'm half blind and have to lean way over to do this, uh, to read this. She does say, I have to do this in sections. Oh, she, because she's commenting, right? Uh, some have taken my workshops and could do them themselves, but hire me so they can spend their time doing what they do best, being behind the camera, right? Um, because they took my class, right? They can relate to the value. They can relate the value to their clients and justify the pricing. So listen, if you yeah. outsource your editing, that becomes part of your cost of doing business. It could be your signature. It, but yeah. it becomes strictly from the cost perspective. Like, oh, sure. Okay, if yeah. I'm going to sell you a widget for a dollar, mm -hmm. okay, there's a cost that it took me to obtain the widget. Yep. Right? If I'm oh. going to photograph somebody, it costs, this is my, my base price. I'll, I'll take the Hamilton job, the job I did out in Montana for the uh, GSK uh, pharmaceutical plant. I hired Andrew to come with me. Right. Right? And I billed him to my client. Yeah. And, and this is how much for me, and literally, this is how much for my lodging and food, and this is how much for my assistant. And to what Bob's saying, that, that's exactly what we're, what he's doing when he takes his primper yep. to a session. My insourcing. His, his wife to an extent, she's her time's money. I pay her too. Yep. Uh, any any second shooters you have, uh, all this stuff. Same thing, same thing when you're going to do, uh, let's just say you're gonna build your pro portfolio. As a general rule, if you want hair and makeup on a shoot, that could be trade for print, could be. But as a general rule, I offer some cash. And here's the reason. They're, especially on hair and makeup, they're using makeup. They're using their- They're using their materials, their supplies. Materials. Now, I don't, so I wouldn't pay them as much as I would as if they were on a, this is a kind of a trade for print, and so materials. TFP is a common right. Yeah, trade for portfolio, trade for print. print. So anyway, come with models and makeup artists. What he's getting stylists. at is build that into your price. There is no reason why you should have to foot that bill um, just on your own. So if you're charging, uh, let's go back to my example because I'm way under less than Bob. So let's say I'm making 100 bucks an hour. Uh, I'm not doing 300 dollars an hour, but if I hire a person for 50 bucks an hour. To come with me. You're not taking that out of your own money. No, no, I'm actually <laughs> going to charge them now. I'm charging right. $175 an hour because right. I need to make money on what they're doing so, also. So, so yeah. th this is a big, I mean, Sam could take this conversation and have right. a heyday with it, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. Um, but just because you have an expense to do what you do, you, you can expense that to your client. Absolutely. Um, I, I don't line item my no. assistants on yeah. a regular shoot. Um, I do on commercial work where I'm going someplace because if I'm going to hire one or two or three guys, well, if we're flying or driving, all those a, things are going to get listed out. That's uh, a business though. You're it, it really is. Yeah, yeah. But even for our headshot clients where we're going in and doing a studio there, I don't expense those items out, but they are part of what I'm factoring in that I'm going to pay that. And you know what? If, if we drop 800 bucks in, in when, insourcing stuff and outsourcing stuff during the course of a seven or $8,000 job, for me to have some peace of mind, pfft, yeah. Well, with, and, take my money. And my new little venture there, the, the bridal sessions, I'm not going to line item, and I will have a makeup artist. I, I'm not going to line item that. There's no way. Uh, you're going to pay me. Sorry, you're going to pay you me. Beat your yeah, microphone up there, like ah. You're going to pay me whatever it is. Uh, I don't know. Two hundred fifty dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and uh, here's what I'm going to provide. And that's it. That's that, that's all the line item you really need. Commercial, a little bit different. It's they're going to want to say, you know, okay, the hotel industry wants, you know, let's break that down a little bit, whatever. Uh, and then they might kind of come in and bust your chops on a couple of line items or whatever. Well, and you, this is business. So yeah. I, I, in a tactful way that doesn't say beat up my prices, and this is business, you know, 
everything in business, folks, everything in business is negotiable. Yeah, and it costs right? money. Right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times I'll, uh, I'll negotiate for a company to pay my meals. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one of the cool things, we were over, I'm gonna say, we were over at ESI, like I've been talking about, and they ordered like premium food delivered for us. I don't know if you've ever uh, been with, uh, ordered from the Crave mm. uh, kitchens in Boise, but Crave they- Crave is brilliant. They ordered Crave oh. in, they fed my team every day that we were on site there. And that's just, that's glorious, because I would normally be footing the bill to feed my team. So anyway, not, I'm, doing, I'm not getting I'm gonna, paid by Crave, but if you ever want to go eat there, go eat there because I'm telling you that is good stuff, good. right? Yep. So um, back to Sherry for just a minute, and then we're going to hit the wrap up and we're going to get out of here for the day. Does that cool. work? Yep. Um, she says that um, she discussed styles and their clients are like and are looking for. So the, I think she's saying she discuss, discusses the styles that they and their client likes. I get that. Um, and are looking for to see if they are a good fit. That's super important. Like yeah. I send people away when they're not a good fit for what I do. Yeah. We talk about this all the time, right? Yeah. Um, turnaround time is also discussed as well. And folks, you must discuss turnaround time with your clients. It is, I hear two things over and over and over in my business networking. They never call me back or we've been waiting a month or a month and a half for our images. Yep, and expectations are everything. So it is. If, and, if, and if you tell them you're going to have it in a week, you have it. Have in it week. inside a week. Have yeah, it in four yeah, or yeah, five days. Yeah. I, think, I think we've talked about this, and we won't beat this up, but, you know, over uh, what is it, under promise and over deliver. Yeah. So uh, do it that way, and you'll be good. I've got a so. job I need to deliver this afternoon, and it'll be right on time. Um, I spec 10 to 14 days for some of this stuff, and as busy as we've been, I'm right at the week mark. We're about ready to wrap this up, so if you're on the 10th hole on Sunday, come and say hi. Just gonna say that. Excellent. Yeah. Over there, what yeah. golf club? Hillcrest. Hillcrest. Yeah. Awesome, so uh, last thing I wanna hit, uh, two things really, yeah. is uh, you know, you're here on YouTube, you're watching us on our live stream. Um, I love to ring the bell, set reminder, and get notified when we're going live. I, I really enjoy that. When I get back to my phone afterwards, usually I'm lunching after this, I pop up my phone and I watch a little bit of this and see how the feed was, see how the sound sounded. Well, and I think we both do that. I do that. Yeah, I put it yeah. up on my TV in, in the house yeah, watching. My wife goes, you guys are idiots. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> she would know. Um, so anyway, uh, like, and like and subscribe for us. And um, I think that we're going to take this whole rig out to Tatonia and make some listen, more content for and, our YouTube and channel. And listen, guys, uh, the interwebs out there may not be like... It I'm going to record it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna record on site and not worry about pushing live, and then we'll post them the following week. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. That's so cool, huh? It, yeah, it's very cool because literally it could be like the internet out there could be two Campbell soup cans and a string. So we, <laughs> we don't know. So. I don't know. It could maybe be better than that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it could be. Um, and then the last thing, why don't you hit this one for us? Yeah, ppvidaho.com. Why don't you come and join us? Listen, uh, all the stuff that we talk about and all the stuff about community and building relationships and on and on and on is what we do at PP of Idaho. And you don't have to be a professional to join us. If you're an aspiring professional or just an aspiring photographer that wants to get better. I would better, call them super hobbyists. Yeah. Um, if you're you, that person that's obsessed with your you, camera and loving photography. If you're hauling it around and you're taking a bunch of pictures and you just want to take it to the next level. This, this is where you're gonna find it. This that. is where you're gonna find it. And, and you know, we have a whole bunch of, yes, there's a whole bunch of education. And yes, it's gonna, cost you a little bit but not much uh membership in our group is uh 100 a year 99 bucks or 9.95 a month but we do ask for a 12-month commitment on that yeah. so it's pretty pretty simple ppofidaho.com there's a join us button i don't know front page down a little bit Find um it. if you want to go to fall retreat and you're not a member that's fine we, we give have, you a big discount for coming on board and coming to retreat so you're a half. member and going to retreat at the same time i think is I don't know, I can't remember. I, I'm not going to say, it, go out there on the, <laughs> go out there on the events Lots page. Lots of numbers. Yeah, go out there on the events page and you, you'll find that number uh, down there. But basically, your membership is half price for a year. Yeah, so, first year um, Which, if you join right now, is going to cover you for a convention in whenever we have it, January or mm -hmm. February or March or whenever. Yeah, we actually haven't set dates We haven't set dates, yeah. Get... So just bear in mind that uh, you might take a shine to us, you might like what we do, and uh, you know, it's get out the there. It's the people, man, it's P the people. ppofidaho.com, join us button, 
See you there. See you there. Yep. All right. We'll see you next week with a great discussion. Yeah, we right? have a good one. Yep. And uh, just have a great week and work hard. Yep. Have a good one. See Bye. you later.